good morning, good afternoon, good night, depending on what part of the world you are. And when you're watching this video, I am Black Bright and I'm broadcasting out of the UK around the world and I'm sharing all kinds of information and catching up really after being in 11 days hibernation. So now I'm kind of finding all this information and I'm getting it out there and you might feel a bit overwhelmed by it, but of course you don't have to watch it all now. You can use your time, you can, when you haven't got nothing better to do, you can think, oh, what's Black Bite chatting about now? So you don't, you know, even though I'm doing them now because I need to get them out of the way, I'm not expecting everybody to upload them and watch them as soon as I record them. So that's getting that out of the way. So thank you, subscribers. Um, and anyone just passing through for the first time, welcome to my channel. I hope you find it interesting and useful and relevant. Now, today's video is about the DWP, in essence, asking claimants to lie about their condition. Well, what they're really doing is asking them to minimise their condition or downplay their condition so they can get a job. That's basically what they're doing. So they've got this aid out and it's telling them not to use words like depression, chronic illness and use more general terms. And the thing is, is that if you do feel depressed, why aren't you allowed to say you're depressed? If you do have a chronic illness, why can't you just say I have a chronic illness? If you do have a generative disease, why can't you say that? But what they're saying is that if they use these terms and on an application form, they're not going to get a job. So they don't want them to use those terms. And they're suggesting they use something like low mood and other terms. I, I'm, I'm going to put the link down below. The fact of the matter is it's fine trying to put people into jobs because the DWP has targets, but people are naturally sick. Some people have genuine disabilities and it's no point asking them to downplay their disabilities to get a job. And when they get a job, because of these same conditions that they've been asked to downplay, they're booted out of the job. And then they're the ones who are be going to be sanctioned for losing the job or not doing the job properly. So it's, it's really, really um, quite disappointing to see information like that. Apparently, there was an uproar about it, so they've withdrawn um, the, the aid. They call it an employment aid. They've withdrawn it, and they're saying they don't, they're not expecting people to downplay their disability. That's not the intention. They're saying the intention is that people um, do not make out that their condition is worse than what it is. And, you know, it's nobody knows what people go through. If you've got an illness or a disability, you cannot um, quantify that. You cannot know what that feels like. And you cannot ask somebody. Sometimes you can't even interpret the way you feel. It's difficult to articulate pains and aches without sound, sounding like a pain in the ass. You know, sometimes I have friends and every day they come in and they're talking about, oh, you know, that hurts or I've got a headache or my back's hurting me or, you know, I sprain my ankle or, you know, I've, all kinds of stuff. And it does become quite monotonous. And what happens is the more you repeat it, the more people who are listening become immune and so what happens with i believe the dwp they've probably become immune to what is essentially serious and um genuine conditions and because they've become immune they're trying to create um some kind of visual aid to, to so that it reflects how their interpretation of individuals' ailments. And they can't do that because they're not in that person's shoes. So, um, yeah, I just think, I did put down that, you know, they're asking people to lie because really that is what they were asking people to do. They're asking people to be dishonest. They're asking people 
to, um, you know, not admit to the degree of their disability so they can put them in a job. I mean, if somebody's in pain, ongoing pain, how the hell are they supposed to work? How the hell are they supposed to get a job? That's the whole point. You've taken people's jobs away by, you know, selling off um, companies and industries and deindustrialization. You're the ones that have put people in a position of unemployment and poverty. And now you're telling them to go out and get zero contracts, contracts that can't even pay their rent. Or you're asking them to move in areas where it, it kind of, um, uh, what do they call those areas? You know, they've got a certain set amount that they're prepared to pay um, people for the rent. So supposing they've got 500 a month, they can no longer live in London. They have to go way out in the sticks where that 500 pounds a month qualifies. So they're uprooting people. They're, you know, they're not giving people what they need. You have people in desperate need. And sometimes it's not through their, anything to do with them. And yes, I remember the days when we saw those programs, Benefit Street, which really showed people on benefits in a bad light. And I can't imagine that the majority now... Um, can be identified as those on Benefit Street because those people were on benefits from the time they were born. But what the benefit people doing now, people like DWP, they're penalising new claimants for what the old claimants who took advantage of the system have done. And that is not fair. So you cannot deal with people in this kind of situation with automation and artificial intelligence and biometrics. You cannot deal with, correctly assess people in that way. People have to be dealt with on a case-by-case -case basis. And instead, the DWP is outsourced, paying millions to, to people or um, companies to do the job for them. And the, the people don't care about people. And so what's happening is, is that people are getting, they're either dying or they're sick or they're ending up homeless. And for what? You cannot automate these kind of processes. Universal credit cannot be automated. Payments can be automated, but assessments need to be done on a face-by-face -face basis and proper assessments done, individual assessments done on a case-by-case -case basis. That's how it should be done. And not telling people, oh, well, don't say you're depressed because it won't look good. You won't be able to get a job. Just say you've got a low mood. That, that, that would be fine because everybody has a low mood every now and then. A low mood is totally different from depression. And if you have found yourself in a situation where you've lost your job or you've lost your home or you've lost your, your, your family's gone or your husband or your spouse has left you and somebody in your family has died, somebody close to you has died, you haven't got any money, you haven't got any food, you are going to be bloody depressed. So why should you downplay that to a low mood when you cannot see a light at the end of the rainbow, at the end of a tunnel. So anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. Um, and that's all for now. Short and sweet. Bye-bye.